in uh, English. I don't know Estonian, I'm afraid. I'm sorry about that. And I, I think you're probably very tired, so I, I will try to be very brief. Uh, I'm going to present you with an idea, not true. This is just a method that we are using. We are not selling snake oil here. Uh, as we heard from uh, Ellen from Norway yesterday, many boys choose not to do art because they consider it girly or gay. And uh, we at the organization where I come from, we love to ask questions. We ask questions about why we do things and uh, we like to uh, question every method that we're using. What is the purpose? Why are we doing this? And uh, one of the things we have been asking or working with is the idea that uh, boys uh, is the roles of boys and girls, or girls and boys. And it is our opinion that boys know that they are boys and girls know that they are girls. The question is, what does it mean and what are the roles? And I have seen that uh, here in, uh, here in uh, Tallinn, uh, people have certain expectations of the roles of women and men. This I have seen since I came. So it's very interesting to uh, hear your, or uh, present our ideas to you. Well, my name is uh, Matthias Matthiasen. I work for uh, the Kjaltasteppen organization in Iceland, which is a 12-year-old organization or company which runs kindergartens and elementary schools. The current number of kindergartens is 12, and the elementary schools are four. Additionally, we operate a combined kindergarten, elementary school, and music school in a small town in the northwestern part of Iceland. Around 400 people work within the organization, and the number of children is around 1,800. The organization uses a pedagogical model called Kjatli, the Kjatli model. The main element of this model is gender segregation in classrooms. Additionally, the focus is on env environmental issues, democratic principles, positive discipline, and community spirit. It is our belief that co-educational schools may deprive children of valuable resources and opportunities. There is direct discrimination on basis of sex. The boys get the biggest share of attention, but this attention is mainly critique, while the girls get the praise for being quiet, hardworking, and well-behaving. The girls act in accordance with these expectations of most school, schools, while the boys do not. Both sexes monopolize certain activities within the classroom, depriving the other sex of being allowed to try, try out the whole range of activities. Technical interest is the boys' domain, while the girls have monopoly on many traditional creative outlets. Studies have shown that the, the children deem behavior appropriate for their gender by looking at the other sex and exercising the opposite behavior. This is what we call mirror tendency or a reverse effect. Girls do what boys do not do. Boys do what girls do not do. So if the girls are good at art, the boys stay away. Uh, additionally, uh, Girls sometimes are used to buffer the boys' behavior. If the boys are unruly, the teachers say, ah, I want to have a lot of girls because this quiets down, this makes it better in the classroom. I have used it myself when I've been teaching to sort of have the girls around to stop the boys from shouting or running around or whatever. And uh, boys are less school ready than girls at a certain age. And girls and boys are different, whether it's nature or nurture, that is not something that we think about in the Kjatla Stepman. We don't care if, it's, if you're born with it, if you learn it, there is a difference and we can see it and we have to work with it. We have to work with the acquired roles, the roles that the children think they have, that the society has sort of pushed upon them. We do not believe that gender segregation is the future of our society. It's not the goal. The children of either sex can understandably enjoy each, other compa each other's company, but in order for them to utilize everything a school has to offer, gender segregation can be a useful tool. The children enjoy themselves without bumping into each other. They can train new skills and exercise the whole range of human qualities. They meet every day to practice good communication and friendship in our schools.
Yep. A very important skill for girls is to learn some me thinking. Most of the time, they are very good at the us thinking. Thinking about and taking care of the group, they sometimes lose themselves in group thinking. They care too much about the group instead of caring about themselves. The skills that we try to teach are independence, self-confidence, self-awareness, and public expression. Additionally, they exercise positive attitudes, especially related to problem solving. I can do it. And to mistakes. We also like to have them be, uh, allow them to be positive towards their own mistakes. It's OK to make mistakes. It's no problem. And, uh, of course, many girls have those qualities. And uh, some boys may lack some of those qualities. Therefore, we train, train the same things in both the girls' and boys' classes. The only difference is that we put different emphasis on the training when working with either girls or boys. As you can see, the girls enjoy en expressing themselves. And this is what we actually implement in our uh, elementary schools, play. We play even though we come to the elementary school. We don't stop playing in kindergarten. And the boys enjoy themselves as well, in a little bit different way, but they like it as well. And sometimes, the girls, girls need an extra initiative to step outside their comfort zone. They have a very clear comfort zone sometimes. They don't dare to step out of it. So we ask them to, come, come, try it out. Try to be cold on the feet. Feel the, the water on your feet. And they like it. It's a lot of fun. The boys, on the other hand, need an extra emphasis on social training and thinking. This is also the basis for our positive discipline training, where they are trained to show respect, tolerance, helpfulness, and manners. Additionally, we place emphasis on tolerance, broad-mindedness, friendship, caring, closeness, and love. I said tolerance twice, but that's OK. It's a very good thing to exercise. And here we have the girls who are very disciplined. It's no problem for them to line up and be very cute. The boys, a little bit different, slightly different. But they are trying, and they are doing, doing well. And additionally, sometimes they simply have to learn to help each other, be friends. And when we separate them, we saw, see the whole range of these qualities. When the girls are gone, the smallest boy in the group can be helped by the biggest boy. It's no problem. There is no girl to take his place. There is no girl running in to take the role. The role is open for the taking, and the boys do take them. The boys like to be nice to each other because it's natural. There is no one saying that it's not a boy's thing to be nice. It is. OK. And even to some closeness. And that is very uncomfortable for a boy. It's no problem for girls. Girls can be very close. But boys, and I say it for myself, it's very hard to have too close, much closeness to another person. So we help them to acquire it. Because it's a valued uh, human resource to be able to be close to another human being. And therefore, we work towards it. We use uh, open-ended play and learning materials. And in the kindergartens, we use clay, crayons, and paper, among other things. While the elementary schools, we have started using iPads for the 10 and 12-year-olds. And later, we will have some iPads at younger ages. The iPad, while being a closed architecture, is in many ways, uh, allows in many ways the children to record audio and video clips, to express themselves. And as a learning assistive tool, it's very valuable. It also shows them uh, how to be creative in various other ways. And we have uh, recently uh, acquired two Macintoshes, which we use in combination with the iPads to make film clips and, and sound recordings and so on. But we never go very far from uh, the simple uh, clay and, uh, and, uh, and pencils and, and uh, paintings. The children make their own books. We have tried not to use stereotypical fixed framed books, which sort of keep you in a box, where you have to fill in blanks in, uh, in a text. 
why not create your own book? Work with your own story. Do what you like. And here the girls are, are creating their own, uh, own uh, study material. And uh, instead of, um, yes, we follow the natural curriculum, but we opt to use more open methods of learning. We have also removed the teacher's desk. This is the teacher here. He's sitting on the floor. And, um, and in some classrooms, we don't have any chairs and no tables. Instead, the children work of the, on the floor if needed. Various positions, it has been shown, help children memorize. So if you only sit down like this the whole day, it sort of, people say that it creates a blockage. So when you stand up, or if you sit down, or if you lie down, it's much more fun. And you learn a lot. But most of, most of all, it's, a, it's an enjoyable experience. And sitting, like you are doing now, for a very long time, well, you know, it's not very enjoyable. So, access to the teacher and uh, group work is easier when they get away from the standard old-style classroom setting. And this is what we are trying to break up. Our creation takes many forms, and the result can be very interesting. This is a play, shadow play. Uh, when, we, uh, when the girls are not around, any behavior is considered okay for the boys. Everything is possible. So, you can paint. It's no problem. You can create art. Because it's a boy's thing. You're in the classroom and you look around, there are only boys. And what are they doing? They are creating art. They are being nice to each other. They are uh, practicing discipline. They're doing various things that the girls monopolize in other situations. Yes. It's very important for us in the Catholic pedagogy that the children do the same things in either the girls' or the boys' class. The only difference is that we place more emphasis on certain activities in either class in order to strengthen the children's abilities. And it's also very important for the children to meet every day. The girls and the boys meet every day for positive activities. They can create art together, they can set up a play, they can show a play to the other group. They can invite for pancakes, they can, there are various interesting, fun uh, activities that we can invite the other group to participate in. And a study that was made in Iceland actually showed that our children who had been in our kindergartens and then gone to regular schools, after 10 years, the only thing they retained, but it was a very important thing, the only thing they retained was positive outlook towards the other gender. Girls liked the boys better. Boys liked the girls better when they were coming from our schools for some interesting reason. I allow you to draw your own conclusions on that. And when the boys are not around to hog the technology, to monopolize it, the girls become very creative with the iPad, for example. They don't do the same things. That's very in interesting. They do not create similar things. They do use different stories. There are different narratives that come from the girls. But they are there, and they are theirs. And that's very important. They own it. This is all. And I only took 20 minutes. Yes. Thank you very much. Sur tänu, kas on ka küsimusi? Kommentaare, märkusi? This pedagogy, does it uh, take place only in your school? This? This Kjalli pedagogy. Mostly, yes. There are some schools that have uh, uh, used our uh, method uh, in Iceland. Uh, and there are schools in Sweden, in Gävle. And there are two schools, kindergartens in Norway, nearby Oslo, that are using our method. So, yeah, it's, it, there are various others who use it. 
I think it's so uh, interesting. Uh, do you have uh, wider perspectives? Because uh, when we uh, have entered this room, we are almost in ladies' room. And we, we know it's not only in Estonia, it's in the, all the Nordic countries, it's in Europe, working with children, women are around, yes. and very few men. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think you could change that? Uh, because uh, maybe uh, the boys uh, should like to uh, uh, work with uh, children uh, after having uh, lived in your school. That's true, and, and uh, we have been thinking a lot about this. Uh, unfortunately, previously, men were very afraid of us. So we didn't get very many men to work with us. And uh, we sort of theorized that uh, a woman showing very good qualities could be a very good positive image for the boys as well. But fortunately, there is some linkage that is created between the boys and a manly teacher. And a, a man who has all these good qualities as well can be a very good role model. And the, the men are coming to us now. But we don't want men who only want to enjoy themselves, who don't swipe the floor, who don't take up a rug, who don't change diapers. They are supposed to do everything. If they're there for the free ride, for the fun of it, just to play the guitar, no. They can stay at home. Because then they're bad role models. They're showing the boys that men don't have to do certain things. But men have to do all the things. Everything. Wash the dishes. I mean, that is what I enjoy doing and, and show the boys. So. Any other questions? Then one, one from me. Mm -hmm. um, you quite well presented the kind of, um, let's say, basis, mm -hmm. research basis, and the practice you have. Um, so what is the, let's just say, downside? Not to say what is a critique, but what do you then lose if you go with this direction? I'm not, I, I don't intend to ask what's wrong with it, rather to ask what are the reasons to weigh for one or another? It's, it's very interesting. Uh, we have received critique uh, from both those who think that uh, gender segregation can be bad for children. Okay. We have received critique from those who think that we create lesbians and uh, homosexual men by, creating, by uh, separating small children. But, uh, and uh, then we have a critique from uh, the Reggio Emilia school in Iceland who thinks that we are not creative enough. And uh, uh, what, are, what else? There. Yeah, and uh, which are the critique you is there any one that you agree with a bit? I mean, obviously there could be a lot of just not believing. Uh, yes, I, I think we could be doing more things faster, but but for example on the creative side, we try, but but we could do things faster. Okay. So, uh, but but the thing about uh, separating girls and boys, I have never, and I have studied uh, clinical psychology apart from being a teacher, I have never run into anything that says that is, it is uh, harmful or dangerous or in any way uh, disturbing for the children. And our 20 years experience shows, no, it isn't. Our children are content and they come back and work with us when they, uh, when they grow up. So, it's very cool. Okay. Yep. I think it's interesting when you, you say that you are, <laughs> you got it, oh yeah, the translators, okay. Um, I wonder, because I think the skepticism towards separating boys and girls is that you create more differences between them and that you kind of stuck them to the old role models. From what you're saying, it seems that you think that, or, or you, you you might see that the opposite is happening, so that you have more, you could say, equal equality between men and women through your methodology. Have you seen any results on that? Since you've been working with this for 20 years, maybe th those who are coming back to you, can you see any difference between them and children who 
been to other schools? Well, uh, maybe I'm biased, and I think I probably am. So I, I tend to see that the girls, for example, who come to us, no, the boys actually even as well, who come to work for us, uh, who have been in our schools, that they are more, for example, the girls, girls are more assert, assertive of, of themselves. And, uh, but they are incredibly friendly, and that's, that's uh, sort of the main aspect of our culture, it's, it's friendliness. We put on the smile in the morning, and we smile the whole day. It's, it's our work assignment. It's, it's like a uniform smile. And, uh, and this I see from the children who come back to us. But uh, the thing, and maybe I forgot to mention this, uh, because it relates to your question as well. The old style gender segregation was about different roles. It was about boys doing specific things and girls doing other things. This is not what we are doing. We are doing exactly the same things, but we try to focus on what the boys may be lacking. We look at boys and we see that sometimes they don't work too well in, in a group. So we help them to create a group, a team. And they, they start liking it. They start working as a team. They start working with each other, respecting each other's differences. And when they are able to do that, the boys, they actually are able to respect the girls' differences as well because they have sort of sorted it out within themselves. They have acknowledged. And, for example, uh, uh, bullying is something that we sort of work a lot with and are very focused on. And we don't see that so much because we try to create a friendship group. And when we start with the boys and then send them to the girls, they sort of start liking them and liking each other. And there is an idea of enemy pictures, that children that are put together, maybe in a classroom that is overcrowded and problematic, that they get an enemy picture of each other. And I remember it when I was teaching in a mixed class. I remember the girls complaining about the boys. They didn't like the boys because the boys were noisy. They asked me to sort of suppress the boys. The, pro the boys were simply expressing themselves but the girls didn't like it, and vice versa. The boys had no access to the girls' tight-knit groups, which are separate from the boys. So this is what we try to change. Whether we succeed, yeah, I don't know. We have 20 years of happy parents and happy, happy children, but we should do more research. That's true. Thank you for that. <laughs>